So what we need to do, we need to run some HDMI cables up the wall and we need to put a new power outlet behind the TV. This is the bottom of the wall. I'm at the bottom of the wall right now. I just want to show you guys what's going on. When in construction, when we install the wiring, the beginning, we have to put these boxes in and the boxes, they attach to a stud. So anytime you know that there's a box, you know that there's a stud nearby. Since I see these two are so close together, I'm going to go ahead and assume that there's a stud right in the middle, but just to double check, I took my tweaker here and I'm going to take and stab kind of diagonally through the front of the box. Yeah, there's a stud right there for sure. If I go this way, my tweaker should sink all the way in. Yeah, buried. So I know there's a stud in between these two boxes. Um, I don't like running my low voltage wiring. Uh, low voltage, I'm going to call my HDMI communication cable, satellite cable, all that stuff like that. That's going to be low voltage. I don't like running my low voltage wiring inside of a box. This is a box. I don't like boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this box out. To do that, I'm just taking a uh, chisel. It's a big flat handled chisel. I'm going to stick it in between the box and the stud. And I'm going to pry away from the stud. If I pry towards the stud, you're going to be tempted to do that, but you'll beat up this drywall. And then when you put the faceplate back on, you'll see that damage. So it's a little harder to do, but you push the box away from the stud. Ugh. There's a nail at the top and there's a nail at the bottom. And you've got to break those two nails loose. Jake, I'm going to tell you a secret. Jake's off camera. I'm going to take this box, I'm going to break it off, and I'm going to leave it inside your wall. How does that make you feel? Uh, all right, I suppose. <laughs> you can see that box just got broken off. There. Don't bother taking the box out. I mean, if you really want to take the box out of the wall, go ahead. But that's a lot of work for no payoff. Just leave it in there. That way you don't damage the wall. Okay? So, uh, is it just going to fall down in front of that vent? Yeah, this wall, no, it's just, there, there's, a, there's a piece of wood. There's a piece of wood on top of this vent, so it's going to fall down. It's going to sit on that wood. It's going to be there forever. Does that make you feel sad? No. Sorry. Sorry if that makes you feel sad. <laughs> Jake's a great guy. Jake doesn't care. Okay, once I've got the box loose, all I have to do is just pull the, pull the wiring out, and I'm done. So I got the box out of the wall, kind of a pain in the butt. Um, not a lot of tips I can give you except don't damage the wall. We are going to put something in its place, a ring. Like this. A ring is going to go in its place, but I don't like to use boxes for low voltage wiring. So anytime you use low voltage wiring, you use a ring. For electrical, you use a box. But with this box out of the wall, we're ready to start running some wire. So Jake had a good question. He said, Alan, you're a moron. Those were his words. He said, you are so stupid. Why don't you just use a box? And I said, just kidding, he didn't really say that. I said, we like to use a ring like this because when we use low voltage wiring, we like to have a lot of slack. And then we like to have a lot of wires. So anytime, I might be running, not in this case, but sometimes I might be running like 10 wires in here. And so we need a lot of space for all that wiring to come in the back. And then sometimes I take my extra slack and I push it back inside. And it just goes inside the wall. As opposed to if you had a box, you'd never get the slack to fit. So anytime you're using vol low voltage, use a ring. This is called a cut-in ring. We'll go over this later on. Um, anytime you're using electrical, you have to use a box. Okay. So I went ahead and I marked the outer rims of the TV. Kind of just to give me a rough idea so you guys at home can kind of visualize how the TV is going to sit on this wall. So this green tape, that's the right side, bottom, left side. And remember when I was down at the bottom of the wall, I said there's that piece of wood between the two, out between the outlet and the low voltage? Well, that just so happens to be the stud that we're mounted to. So we know that if we're going to run the wiring up the wall from here, we need to go to the right of this stud. My low voltage wiring needs to go to the right of this stud. And I can't go much further. You don't want to go too far past the bracket because you don't want it to be seen. If this is the edge of my TV right here and my wiring is too far out, you're going to see it, right? So I want to stay at least two or three inches away from my tape. So I'm going to go ahead and put my low voltage wiring here to the right. And then I've got to cut in another one for my electrical. And that has to be to the left of the stud because that way we're right above the electrical box. So I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys how to cut that in now. This right here is called a single gang cut-in box. If you go get one from, or cut-in ring, I'm sorry. If you go to Home Depot to buy one of these, they'll probably call it an old work uh, mud ring or something like that, old work box. 
But as you can see, there's some tabs here in the front. These tabs are meant to be outside the wall, these tabs right here. And then when I tighten this screw in the front, it turns this tab in the back, this tab starts to go in, and it pinches the back of the wall. So this tab right here will pinch the back of the drywall. This tab right here is gonna be on the front of the drywall. And that's gonna be how you install a box on an existing wall. So when I go ahead and mark it, I don't wanna make the hole as big as, if I make the hole, oh, that's a little blurry. If I make the hole as big as these tabs right here, this box is gonna fall in. So the hole can only be as big as this space here, that space to that space, that space to that space. And then you gotta cut it over here. So when I make my marks, I'm gonna mark it here and here and on the outside. So I decided I'm gonna stick it right here on the side of the TV, as straight as I can. They do make little cutouts for these levels. I do have one. I'm not showing it here. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it without. I'm just gonna to try to trace the outside of this box. Or this ring, sorry. Make my marks. Perfect. Now it doesn't, you're not gonna be able to have full access to it because there's a little piece of plastic in your way, but it gives you the rough idea. Okay, is that cut out like that? We can go ahead and cut out this hole. When you're cutting a hole in the drywall, make sure you use a keyhole saw. This is a regular handheld drywall saw. If you guys use something different like a powered saw, you might cut through plumbing or electrical or ducting. You never know what's behind there. Always use a hand powered saw like this so you don't jack up whatever it is back there on the other side of the wall. And if you vacuum, you're gonna keep the dust down quite a bit. Voila. And then once you cut the hole, go ahead and you put your box or your ring inside the hole. Double check, make sure it fits. That fits perfectly. Don't install it yet, just make sure it fits. Okay, now we're gonna ready to start running some wire. We're getting ready to install the wire in the wall. What we're gonna install in this house, we're gonna install two HDMI cables and a coax cable. Um, he gets his TV direct from Antenna. So uh, we need to make sure we put that coax cable in there because the coax at currently runs to the bottom of the wall. We gotta run it back to the top. You guys might be asking, why don't you just pull it out at the top? Well, what if later on down the road he wants to get a cable box and the cable box needs to be down, you'd have to pull it back down. It's easier to splice on down below and then uh, run a new wire up. So I've got two HDMI cables. One, I've got a piece of white tape, my regular HDMI cable, and my coax cable. Typically when these come, they come with a little plastic cover on the end of the HDMI cable. Jake doesn't know this, but I'm using my spare stuff. So, sorry Jake. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape over the end. That way when I'm running it through the wall, um, no funk gets inside of the inside of the connector, okay? So now we're getting ready to drop the wires down the wall. Jake reminded me off camera, he said, what do you do if there's a piece of wood in the middle here? I'll be honest, like I've, I've got a trick to get through those, so I never even worry about it anymore. But you really should check. You should really check when you, as soon as you can. So as soon as we pop that box off on the bottom, I should have ran a fish tape up the wall to double check. Um, I, I still haven't checked, but I'm so confident that there's not one in here. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Um, this is an internal wall. Internal wall means on the other side of this wall is another room, it's not the outside. The outside walls almost always have fire blocks and they have insulation. Internal walls very, very, very rarely have them. So I hardly even, that's a bad habit. Don't, don't copy me. Check. Make sure you guys check. But I'll do another video in the future uh, showing how to get through those. So I'm just kind of like sloppily taping these things together. And there's no secret. I'm just going to push them down the wall. It should just be an open space from here all the way down to the bottom. I'm just going to push them down the wall. It should come out the bottom. There we go. Oh, so when you're picking the length for how long this wire is, don't be a fool and like order the minimum amount of wire that you need. Oh, I need exactly six foot three. I'm gonna get a six foot three inch wire. There's no such thing as six foot three. But the point is, you wanna make sure you got a lot of slack on this thing, right? Because it's gotta come out of the wall, then it's gotta plug into a device, and then the device might be on the other side of the cabinet, you might move it, you might change positions, whatever. This wire has to go into the TV. This TV, the plugs might be on this side. You might get a new TV and the plugs are on that side. So just give yourself a lot of space. Give yourself about four feet of slack coming out behind the TV. 
four feet of slack coming out behind your cable box, four feet of slack going in the wall. And if you have left over, just push it back in the wall, okay? It's better to be too long than too short. All right, so here we go. All of our wires in the wall. Sorry, Jake, you got my spares. It's a 12 footer and a 15 footer. They're not, not the same length. Don't tell Jake. <laughs> okay, uh, with the low voltage wiring installed, we still have to put boxes and face plates. We'll do it at the very end. Now we're going to go ahead and turn our focus over to this outlet. We're almost done. This is, this is probably the hardest part of the whole installation, and it's not that hard, especially if you have a fish tape. I'm going to fall over and break my neck. Okay, so I went ahead and I turned off the power to this outlet. Just so you guys, believe me, it is dead. You see that? Dead. You know, you know who really cares if you do this hot? Like if you do this live, you know who hero you're going to be? Nobody. Nobody cares, okay? Don't do it hot. Nobody cares. You're going to get shot, and everybody's going to laugh at you forever. So turn it off. Ours is dead. I'm going to go ahead and undo this thing. Paint it on the wall. Dropping my screws. This is a cut in a single gang. Single gang is the size. Single gang would fit like one outlet or one switch. That's single gang. Single gang, cut in box. Cut in mud. This is not a mud ring, it's a cut in box. Uh, if you go to Home Depot, they're going to call this an old work box. The same thing as the ring. These tabs right here, these go on the uh, outside of the wall. When you turn this screw, this tab right here flips up. Bloop. Tightens in, tightens, 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 and squeezes the back side of the wall between these two tabs, and that's how it holds it in place, okay? This is what we're gonna use to hold the outlet that goes behind the TV. You have to use a box, you have to use a box. And the same thing, when we are gonna um, size this box up, we're gonna trace it out to this, not this, to this, and then the sides. Now that, now that you guys all know how this cutting box works, it's time to install it, um, or at least cut the hole for it. So one of the things you want to keep in mind is, is I don't like to put the cutting boxes here in the middle. It probably could fit, but it would be a tight fit, number one. And number two, like what if I change TVs and I have to move the bracket up or down an inch or two? Like now we're covering the outlet. You, can, you always have to think into the future when you're doing these installations and be as flexible as you can. Um, you also have to watch out because there's, remember the arms that are mounted to the back of the TV? Those arms are going to sit here. On this TV, they sit like nine inches apart. So one will sit here and one will sit here. So that would be fine. I could put a box here, I could put a box here, but same thing. What if I get a new TV and it no longer, you know, maybe it's got a wider stance or something like that. So you do have to be mindful of those arms in the back of the TV that they're not getting in the way of the bracket. I'm sorry, of the, of the outlet. So what I decided to do is I'm going to go three inches above this bracket and I'm going to turn it sideways so it's not very tall and I'm going to go ahead and cut it in here. And I need to make sure that I'm on the left side I'm on the left side of these um, bolts right here, and I'm gonna need to be, remember these bolts are for the stud, and the outlet is on the left side of the stud, so I need to mount this box on the left side of the stud. So I'm gonna be about an inch or two away from that, because this tab, when this tab flips out, um, I don't want it to hit the stud and not grab the back. So I do need to go a little bit further away from the stud, about three inches there. I go ahead and put a level here, just so I can get as close as possible. And I'll trace it. And then just like before, we're gonna vacuum and cut this hole. All right, this is a fish tape. If you guys don't own a fish tape, buy a fish tape. Or make friends with somebody who has a fish tape and just pretend to be their friend. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, fish this up the wall. Inside this box, you can see where the wires are coming in right here. Those wires are coming in, obviously they're coming in through a hole. And that hole is just barely big enough for me to fit another wire through. So what I'm going to do, remember this outlet is turned off. I'm going to fish this fish tape up through that same hole.
right there. And I'm going to run this up and it should come out the top. That was the hardest part of the whole installation right there. Look how easy that was. Super easy install. Okay, we'll get this camera back on the stand and continue on. This is the fish tape. This is the Romex, 14 gauge Romex, okay? Make sure you guys are running the right size wire for the circuit. In this case, it's a 15 amp circuit which takes 14 gauge wire. So taping on is actually kind of a more tricky part. Um, when you tape this on, you want to make sure that you tape it with a good bite. So I'm overlapping by about three or four inches. And when I tape it, I want to tape it nice and tight, okay? And I don't want a lot of tape. I want to tape as little tape as possible. So I'm just making one pass the whole way up. And I'm making it tight the whole way. I know I, don't, I can't get a good shot of this. And then when you get to the top, when you get to the top, this is coming out of the wall, sorry. When you get to the top here, you want to make sure that it's not a big old like stop right there. You kind of want to make a smooth transition from the fish tape down into the wire. So you kind of want to make a ramp. So kind of like build up that spot right there a little bit. Because if you have a, if you got a sticking point, when you try to pull this into that tight little hole at the bottom of the wall where the electrical wire is coming out, it's going to stick. All right, and then unless you're a terrorist or a Nazi, when you're done, you'll take your, your, uh, what, your tape right there and you'll fold it into a flag. Only Al-Qaeda takes that thing and just tapes it all the way down like a friggin' madman. Then you gotta go pick at it. Try to do that. Why would you do that? Unless you hate somebody, don't ever do that. Make a little flag. Okay, we're gonna pull this thing. Jake, my lovely assistant, would you mind pulling that fish tape down below? Oh, 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 slow down. Okay, go ahead a little bit more, a little bit more. Keep going, keep going, go, 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 go. Keep pulling or you want to Yeah, keep going, oh, hold it right there. I could probably take it from here. And so once the box hits the, once the wire hits the top of the box, it kind of sticks a little bit. You kind of got to, you kind of got to make them feel loved and important. So it slides on out, boom! Did you guys see that? Did you see that? It's so easy. So easy. Okay, really like this installation is 99% done. We're just gonna button everything up here and uh, show you how the final steps go. Piece of cake, dude, piece of cake.